So hi everyone and welcome to this video on the panel vector autoregression in R. And uh, this is a uh, part of our discussion on the vector autoregression. So as we mentioned before, the vector autoregression is some model. It's a time series model that uh, we assume that all variables are uh, endogenous variables and we can easily model at least uh, with relative ease compared to other models, the dynamics between how variables affect each other. And uh, it allows us to derive our impulse response functions and other uh, th things of that sort. Now, there is a variant of the vector autoregression, which was uh, specifically catered for uh, panel data. And uh, this is your panel vector autoregression. So it's essentially a vector autoregression, but uh, we, do it on panel data in lieu of doing it just on regular time series data. And uh, there is a package uh, inside of R called the panel var package, uh, which is this one. So to install the package, just run this command. By the way, all codes and the sample data set that was used will be linked in the description box below. So check that out. So to install the panel var package, just run that command. I already have it on this computer, so I don't need to do that. Then to sort of invoke the command or to ask, uh, you know, just to summon the command, uh, you just type library panel var and uh, uh, that loads up the package. And this uh, sort of package was written by these people here. And uh, you can read more about this particular package uh, in, uh, in that particular paper. So I loaded a sample data set using this command. So it's already loaded. So if you look at the data set, the F, uh, that this that's this data set, or if you look at it here, it's this one. So it's essentially a labor data set. So notice that we have a panel data set. So how do we know we have a panel data set? So let's look at the year column and the ID column. So if you look at the uh, the ID column, we have uh, specifically seven years, okay, seven years, and then we have one observation here. I'm assuming this is a household level survey data set. So a particular household, say household one, was surveyed every year for seven years. And then each year uh, it had this particular demographic characteristics. So we have here variables such as wage, uh, the log of wage to be more specific, experience squared, just to look at curvature. I, I guess this is weeks worked. Uh, then we have um, other demographic characteristics, uh, whether they, uh, the level of education there is, they receive, whether they're part of a labor union, whether they're male or female, uh, whether they have probably an MS degree, whether they live in this part of the country, or whether they have an occupation, and so on. So it's a generic uh, labor data set. Uh, I, I'm, uh, this video's goal is not necessarily to produce sort of like really uh, good results uh, based on theory. It's just meant to demonstrate how this package works. So. The, the way that we run the panel var is using the pvar gmm command. Now, gmm, as you may have noticed from panel data model, stands for generalized method of moments. And in essence, the way that we, uh, the way that we implement uh, the panel var in, in R and actually in Stata, if you look at that package over there, is through, uh, we can incorporate gmm level assumptions uh, inside of the var setup. And that's to account for a couple of things that GMM is usually used to accounting with, which is to account for uh, endogeneity, uh, simultaneity, and other biases that could feed into the model. So that's something that uh, this particular framework is good at, and it can account for that. So we run using GMM. And then uh, the dependent variables are specified using this uh, C bind command. So remember, all the variables inside of a var are treated as uh, dependent. So we have in our system L wage, the log of the weeks work and the experience. Again, uh, we're not really doing anything theoretical. Uh, this is, I'm just assuming some sort of order here. And then uh, let's assume first we have one lag, okay? Because this is yearly data. So um, in general, as a rule of thumb, if it's yearly data, chances are the lag would be one. Then let's assume that we have exogenous variable, which is this INDB here. Now you can also add predetermined variables into the system uh, if you'd like, and you can also specify it here. Now for the transformation uh, thing here, you can have two, I, I, I believe two specific uh, transformations. 
The most common one uh, is the first difference transformation, which is this FD. But you also have what you call your forward orthogonal deviation um, transformation, which is your FOD. And in general, you do both uh, just to see which one uh, seems to work better and uh, seems to uh, produce more credible results. But let's just use the most basic um, FD or your first difference transformation, as in Aureliano and Bond when they uh, did the GMM. For the data set, this will be DF, of course. Now, your panel identifier is essentially uh, what sort of uh, variables determine the cross-sectional dimension and the time series dimension of the data set. So if you go back to your data set, if you recall, ID, this variable here, is the variable that uh, determines your cross-sectional dimension, i.e. you have uh, a couple of uh, fans. I, in this case, households, I think it's 595 households in the data set or 595 laborers in the data set. Then you also have year, which is the time dimension. So your panel identifiers are those two variables. So you have ID, which is your cross-sectional identifier, and you have your year, which is your time identifier. Then for steps, we'll use a two-step GMM, right, uh, as, um, as proposed uh, in the literature. And these are just by default. So you can change them, but uh, I, I set that as, as is. And if you run uh, this command, it should work. So it should take a while. So what you'll notice is it will go through a couple of iterations to run the command and it will bootstrap first and it will do the second because this is a two-step estimation. Okay, so it will do the second uh, sort of estimation there and then that will produce your results. Uh, it may take a while. Uh, depending on the speed of your, of your computer, but it will run. So as you can see there, uh, that first step ran. Then you'll see another step uh, that will run in about a while. So it's going to automatically run. So you see it's still running. So this one will uh, is going to try to produce robust standard errors, correct for a few biases and so on. So once this runs, okay, what we can do is we can summarize the results using this summary command, which is we just type summary. And then remember, we put this entire var in an object called var, uh, var1. So if we summarize those results, we should be able to get the results of the panel var. Now, bear in mind, we don't typically interpret the raw coefficients of a panel var. And this has been the case in most uh, you know, iterations of the VAR, we normally interpret the impulse response functions and what that could potentially lie in. So the iteration is just almost done. We're just about 100 to go until that iteration is done. Now, typically, of course, you would want to first determine maybe if you want a stationary VAR, that's a route that you could take, or you would want to determine the optimal lag order, but um, we can do that in subsequent iterations. So uh, if you summarize the results summary, this is what you get. So this is the result of the dynamic panel VAR estimation, again, using a two-step GMM estimator. So as, you, as I mentioned earlier, the transformation we used was a first differences transformation. And uh, the group ID is I, uh, the group variable, which is your cross-sectional dimension is ID. Your time variable is year. And you have uh, these many observations and you get these uh, results. And it already benchmarks it for you. And uh, we have that one there. Now, we can do some diagnostics. So this Andrews Lu MMSC will essentially generate your multivariate Akaike score ratio and those typical indicators you use to check the optimal lag order. So again, we assume that it was equal to one, but of course you could do iterations where you have two lags, three lags, and so on. And you can just check which one has the lowest uh, MIC, MAIC and the others. So if you notice this one, uh, these are the Akaike HQIC and the Swarsh patient that we uh, get from this particular model with one lag. Uh, you can explore with the other lags as well. Another key re requisite is the stability condition, just to ensure that all uh, inverse unit roots are inside the uh, inverse unit circle. So if we do this command, the stability command will do that for us. So we put it in this object called stab underscore var1. Then if we print the results, it will tell you that all the eigenvalues lie inside the unit circle, which is what we want and that the PVAR satisfies the stability condition. Now, in most other software, you would see this in an actual graph, and in R, you can do that too by doing that. So the roots of the equation are all inside of the inverse unit circle. 
So that's what you have there. Now, of course, a key thing that we would want to know is the how the IRFs look like. So we can generate two types of IRFs. We have the orthogonalized IRF or OIRF, and you have the generalized IRF, which is GIRF which we'll use uh, at least in this particular example. So to generate those, you just use the command OIRF and GIRF respectively. And uh, you, let's say for this one, I wanna generate for four years ahead. Now, uh, if I run that, so that should create those objects, which I already created earlier. Now, uh, this one, the, uh, this particular command here, I used to bootstrap, which is essentially to be able to show the confidence interval in my particular um, graph. And this is uh, something that people typically like to include just for robustness. Now, this will take quite a bit of time to load depending on your computer, but I, so I pre-ran it. And uh, essentially it's, it generates the bootstrap IRF wherein you can specify a particular confidence band and that will show you the confidence interval. And if you plot uh, two, so I'm gonna plot the GIRF and the uh, bootstrap IRFs. So if you plot it, you should be left with this graph here. Again, it doesn't um, seem to show anything. That's because we didn't really uh, spend a bit, uh, spend much time on modeling it. But if you recall some other studies that involved um, weeks and experience, in, weeks experience and wages, generally these things do not range or cause each other, do not generally affect each other. So the results are somewhat reasonable, at least in this case. So. Uh, that's a simple overview of how panel bar works in R. And I guess in the next videos, we can show a couple more applications of panel bar, such as maybe forecasting or Granger causality. Thank you for your attention, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much.